I'm Elzafat Hamzavi, the senior author of the study Synergistic Effects of Long Wavelength Ultraviolet A1 and Invisible Light on Pigmentation and Erythema. We did this study because sunburn and tanning have been reported to occur even after sunscreens are applied. Possible explanations include failure to apply sunscreens at recommended amounts, failure to apply all the exposed areas, failure to reapply, or could there be the effects of other portions of the solar spectrum that sunscreens don't protect against? That other part of the solar spectrum could be visible light. Our group and others have done work to show that visible light has an effect on the skin independent of UV light. When you add UV and visible light, could there be a different effect? If a patient or a consumer wears a broad spectrum sunscreen, they're still exposed to visible light and very long wavelength UVA1. Those are not covered by existing filters. So we designed this study to investigate the effects of this specific wave band included in the solar spectrum that was considered relatively inert for a long time. After all, we live in a multispectral world where all wavelengths impact our skin. I'm Indermeet Kohli, the lead author of the study being discussed. We performed in vivo testing on 10 subjects with Fitzpatrick skin types 4 through 6, since this population is melanocompetent. For the radiation, we developed light sources with spectral output in the visible light domain, and by using appropriate filters, we added trace amounts of long wavelength UVA1 to one of them. The same dose of visible light was administered with either light source, and subjects were evaluated for skin responses in terms of erythema and pigmentation immediately at 24 hours, 7 days, and 14 days post the radiation. Clinical as well as instrumental assessments were performed. What we found is that erythema and pigmentation responses were much more exuberant, significant, and persistent for the site that was irradiated with long wavelength UVA1 and visible light compared to that irradiated with pure visible light alone, implying that there is a synergistic relationship between visible light and long wavelength UVA1. The results emphasize the need for photoprotection against this part of the solar spectrum. So why is this study relevant to dermatologists and patients? Visible light has a role on conditions aggravated by sun exposure, such as melasma and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, especially in patients with skin of color. Clinically, these patients report worsening of their condition, even with proper use of sunscreens. The development of photoprotection, visible light, and long wavelength UVA1 will also be helpful in the management of photodermatoses induced by UVA1 and visible light, such as porphyria and solar urticaria. Most importantly, the various wavelengths, when combined, may be different than those wavelengths alone. We live in a multispectral world, and we should start looking at the effect of the various wavelengths in combination on the skin.